Many years ago, I lost my blade, Grim Sever, within a Dremor ruin. What's up, viewers? Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment, doing another Skyrim video. This is going to be covering the quest bestowed upon the Dragonborn by Mjol the Lioness. Well, actually, he volunteers for the quest. And it's to recover her blade, Grimzever, from the Mitzel Shaleft ruins where she lost it. Now, Mule has an interesting story, and we will get into that after this. And you can see her walking by on the right there. And she is actually a marryable character, and probably one of the better characters to marry. And, well, at least better than the current wife that my Dragonborn has. But I digress. I really don't want to start over a new game just to marry Neil. But it is a fun quest, and Dwemer runes are always fun to explore, loaded with plenty of Dwemer garbage, and in this case, you can find a full set of Falmore armor if you want to modify it and role play with it. So let's get on with the quest. He spends too much time worrying about well met, friend. How can I help you? I've been adventuring across Tamriel since I was a fresh-faced young woman, barely able to swing a blade. My travels have taken me from High Rock to Velenwood, elsewhere to Morrowind, and all points in between. Many years ago, I lost my blade, Grim Sever, within a Dremor ruin. I took it as a sign that I was wasting my days in search of wealth. You and I are alike. We seek challenge and great fortune. But for me, that's where the similarities end. You see, Riften is my great beast to be slain, and my fortune comes from gratitude and trust. It was lost years ago in a Dremor ruin. Without it, I feel almost as defenseless as a newborn. I don't think I'll ever be able to find a replacement. I couldn't ask you to undertake such a treacherous journey. It would be a fool's errand. But I see that spark in your eye, and I know better than to warn you away. Grimsever rests within the Dwemer ruin of Mesinchaleft. Tread carefully, friend. Those same ruins almost took my life. Please be careful. I... Uh. I was adventuring in the depths of the ruins when I was attacked by a massive construct, like nothing I had ever seen. When the Colossus struck, Grimsever was knocked from my grasp, and I was wounded badly. It was only through blind luck that I was able to crawl away from the Dwemer abomination and make my way to the surface. I must have collapsed. Because the next thing I remember is Eren standing over me, tending to my wounds. Please be careful. I don't wish to be the reason for your death. If you have done some exploration of Skyrim like I have, then I've already located Mitzelshaft uh, on the map, and I'm going to fast travel there to start the adventure. It is... Right, uh, not there, mm, right there, Mitzel Shaft lift or whatever. And I'm going to fast travel to start this quest. And once you arrive, there are bandits, and you have to fight them in order to get into the ruins.
With the bandits dead, you can explore around the outside of the runes, but the main treasure is within the runes, so I'm going to fast forward through the outside exploration. In Skyrim, you gotta search all the little nooks and crannies because there's sometimes stuff of value hidden in them. Once you enter Nizzleshaft, you're going to notice Dwemer junk strewn about. None of it really valuable. The cogs and other stuff. Uh, you can search the damaged or destroyed dwarven, um, whatchamacallit, automatons. And one of these is actually a good one to stick uh, stuff like large decorative struts and to kind of pack rat nearby so that once you've completed the entire mission you can just store stuff in one of these Dwemer automatons because they don't go away and you don't become encumbered. Now I'm going to go sneaky sneaky. There's some bandits up here so let's take care of them. Since Dwemer runes make extremely long videos that take extremely long to upload, I'm going to be doing some fast forwarding or cut scenes to the next major event or battle. Okay, here you can snipe a bandit who is patrolling. That one right there, you can snipe them and take them down quickly. Yep, they're gone. Now let's sneak up here. And you're going to find some Dwemer automatons damaged. Let's see what this bandit has. Gold and my arrow back. And then this Dwemer automaton, uh, yeah. I'm just going to leave that there and see if I can stick some stuff in the Dwemer. Now, the reason I'm taking boots is, yeah, I want to take that gold necklace back. Now, I had a glitch in my controller within playing this, and I ended up, it was a faulty controller. I got a new one, or actually, I got a second one when I opened up my Xbox XS. It was part of the whole package. That one's working. Anyway, you still sneak down here and you come into this room and this is why I say use electrical or magic damage. A lot of creatures or character NPCs in Skyrim use magic. See if I can headshot this guy and yeah I failed and made them aware of me and he uses magic. That guy uses magic or that chick uses magic, and yeah, they're really low level, so you can shoot them and take their stuff. I'm going to fast forward to the next encounter. This guy is actually guarding a room, and if you join the Assassin's Guild, this room will have some importance. It resets. He has gold and a key and get my arrow back. Now this room, again, Malurial's room, has again some importance if you end up joining the Assassin's Guild. You will be sent on a mission to kill this guy, Malurial. Now let's see. I'm going to switch to my swords. There is no one else here, but again, 
you find a treasure chest and some other things, they regenerate. If you come here now and nothing there but gold, you got some of Malurial's journal, you want to read through it, Lucky, blah, 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 blah. He talks about coming to this site now and having problems. Yeah, again, you assassinate him. I'm going to fast forward to the next encounter. Now you're going to come, come upon <laughs> the bandits fighting automatons. And, ah, this guy's got it pretty good. Looks like he's winning. He might take down an automaton. And, yep. One goes down, one of the bandits goes down. Then this chick comes here. She's shooting at the automaton, and then she starts shooting at you. Well, you got to fight her. Looks like the bandits did a pretty good job taking down the automatons. Now there are, or is, a dresser that you can hide stuff in and store stuff in to pack rat, and then you can come back here and retrieve the uh, stuff you uh, store because you can become increasingly Right there, a treasure chest. It's empty, but fill it up with stuff. You can come back, carry this stuff out, and not lose it. Because this is a long haul, and you can come become encumbered and wind up, uh, how shall I say, hiding stuff deeper into the uh, dungeon where you could lose it or lose track of it. Again. Close to the beginning, one layer in, hide stuff, pack rat stuff, or near the very end. Okay, after fighting that spider, there is a nice area here with some dwarves, <laughs> doors. And if you open up, let's see, I'm trying to candlelight here. And you see this right here, door? Yeah, you open that up and you will find a centurion gar guardian with some decent loot on him. And you pull this stuff and you can pack rat it later in the... How shall I say, chest that you have left. Now, this is just a bunch of drawers and doors and areas to explore. I'll fast forward through it. This point, there's going to be some other dwarven spheres, spheres that you encounter, and yeah, you're going to wind up encountering a trap, or not a trap so much as a puzzle in order to get down to the next lore level. And this is kind of a relatively hard part, the puzzle itself. But this sphere here, you can take them down. And if you walk across these pipes here, at the end of these pipes is a chest. And you took that one, you know, I, my character took this dwarven sphere down. Now, I'm just going to grab the garbage. Yeah, the good stuff. 
And this is a chest here. Again, you can pack rat here, but you don't want to. You tend to overlook it. Now, once you jump down here and check this one out, yeah, you fight this one. He goes down quick. Depending on your skill level and armor, my character's in ebony armor with ebony swords. So, yeah. Now, you wind up with... I'm going to candlelight again to see a little better. That's the problem with being dual wielding. You, you try and fire off a candlelight and, well, yeah. Now you got to flip this switch and you got to flip the switches in the order they are presented and the availability. Once you flip this switch and you flip this switch, you got to come back. And again, you got to flip these switches in the order of availability, but you don't need to flip that one. You flip this one, and it takes you here, and you flip this one. And what it does is after you flip this, you can walk around. And again, you got to flip these switches in order of availability. This opens up, and you can start steam, which will drive the elevator. And you check out this chest, and yeah. There's, oh, there's a large strut back there. I'll grab that later. This requires a master lock. I'm going to fast forward. I had a hard time. As I've said before, carry at least 100 lock picks or buy something or wear something that enhances your lock picking skills. This had a lot of nice items in it. I'm going to walk around here and nothing over here. So I'm going to go down to the next level. You have to activate that um, wheel that lets the steam go so you can go down to the next level. This next level you will immediately start to encounter some um, Falmor, who are kind of reprehensible creatures. Ah, common soul gem. Dwarven oil, you can sell. Dwarven gyro, no. Uh, yeah, gold, spider egg, don't care too much about the ear. This one, I... Crouch, flip to first person view, and I'm going to take these Falmer down with bow and arrow. At this point, you're going to need Whirlwind Sprint. Why? Well, there's a chest on the opposite side, and with Whirlwind Sprint, you can get to that chest. Another um, useful thing is water breathing. I first played Skyrim. I actually played Argonian characters because they are naturally water breathing. And I thought, well, there's a lot of water around, so why don't I just play an Argonian? They breathe water. Hey, hey. Now, this one is a Charis. And these things, pretty easy to kill. They can poison you. Gather up the Charis eggs because, guess what? Oh, and the Charis chitin because you can modify Fulmer armor. And at some point, I'll do a video about modifying Fulmer armor. But gather up all of the Charis eggs and glowing mushrooms. Whoa! 
Remember why I said water breathing is a good thing to have? I have it cast on the helmet. So, mage light or candlelight, and you go swimming. There are some hidden chests and a hidden room in this water. Right here, immediately to the right, is a hidden chest. The hidden room you have to explore a little bit to find. So, I'm going to fast forward to when we get there. Here you go, the hidden room, and you swim in, and there is some treasure right there, dwarven oil. And you look around, I can't see very well. I, I got to turn up the brightness at times, but when I do that, it looks burned out. And you see there's some gold, a steel sword of burning. Sometimes the treasure is worth it. You know, you take your risk. Now, let's get back to fighting Falmar. Now I'm going to do some major fast forwarding because this video is getting really, really super long. Now you get to a temple type area and I'm taking this guy down using my archery skills. And again, I'm just going to fast forward to another guy. You come to this hallway, there's a bad guy here. You can see him. This is what I love about the HD or 4K of it. Yeah, you can see more detail. A coworker told me this is not even as good as it can get. And I probably should plug in Valhalla and check it out because he said that was intended for 4K video and maximizing your screen. Now, there's a Fulmore and his pet Charis here. Let's see if I can lure him out. And there's a tripwire. If you can see it, I'm going to shoot it and activate it. Yep, now I can see it better. Activate the tripwire and out comes the Fulmore and his pet Charis. <laughs> Okay, this is a major room in this uh, adventure. You open it up. I'm going to try and take down the Falmore in the distance. And, yep, you take him down. His buddy comes running over. What's going on, Earl? And, whoop, he goes down. And then their other buddy, he starts coming at me. And, yeah, he's coming quick. One hit. Oh, he was a two-hit wonder. So let's see what these guys got. Yep, not a lot. There's this nice little fountain. I'm going to check out the Falmore first, but this place has a couple of Falmore chests. This guy, let's see. Yep, I get my ebony arrow back. And then that's about it. Now let's check out these Falmore chests. They look kind of, yeah, this was unopened. This one, not sealed, and this one, not sealed. Now, don't care about the iron mace. Iron weapons suck. Now, let's 
flip to swords because now that we're going to go up this ramp, there's a Falmore at the top. I know this and some very interesting stuff. So I'm not going to fast forward. You open this up. You take this guy down. Yeah, he's pretty tough. Yep, but he went down. And let's see. Take that. Take any Charis eggs here. Right here. Glowing mushroom. Now, before we go over there, we hit this button because it opens a door down there. And you can see there's some more rooms you're going to have to go through. Now, let's go to this and lockpick its expert. Let's see. Up. I'm. See if I can get this right. First time, and nope. This room actually has some goodies in it. And this chest over here, I'm going to take the Fulmore helmet, and I'm going to open up this chest. Ooh, plate metal, yeah, brazers, armor, to hell with this. Now you go over to the other side here. And there is a full set of Falmore armor. This is why you need Charis Chitin. So you can modify this armor using your blacksmithing skills. And let's see if I can dump anything or just leave stuff. Ugh. Armor, armor. I'm going to leave one of the helmets. I don't need that. Um, yeah, a lot of this stuff I'm... Not that encumbered, so I'm going to keep going on. This is where I'm going to fast forward. This gate would normally be sealed. That's why you hit that button at the top of the uh, Dwemer Tower. And this guy, I take him down, but his buddy is coming at me. A Shadow Master. Yeah, this guy can be tough. And he is coming quickly. Uh-oh, this could be a fight. This room bears mentioning, and it's off to the side when you're running toward the Fulmore tent. You'll see it. It's got a lot of good Dwemer stuff in it. You're going to have to haul it with you at this point. You're getting close to the end unless you become encumbered, which doesn't look like it's going to happen to my character. Oh, Enchanted Hide Bracers. Got to grab those. And let's see what this guy has. Yeah. Okay, not too bad of a haul. I'm going to fast forward to the next level. Okay, the Mitzelshaft Gatehouse. This is where Mjol, the lioness, uh, encountered the Dwarven Centurion. Let's see if I can... Get his attention here. Yeah, got him. You do not want to get fried by these guys. It's a master centurion, and his steam will roast you quickly. Ah, uh, he goes down, and he is loaded with some decent goodies. I'm going to flip to swords because, yes, there are other Dwemer constructs and automatons. Grab everything this guy has except for the junk. And let's go into the room he was in, and you will be be, be, be set upon by a Dwemer sphere who should be pretty easy. Now, there is a lot of good stuff in this room, so I am not going to stop talking. And you're going to become encumbered. 
Well, this room is a great place to, how shall I say, stash stuff because you're going to come back at some point. You have to because you want to get all that goody goody stuff, the Dwemer struts. Here's a steel shield, and there's Grim's Ever. You can return it to Mjol. It's not a bad, it's a glass sword. And does 15 points of frost damage to health and stamina as well. Yeah, that that's a pretty good sword. Now over here, if you have already done the Augum Infinitum quest, you will have a attunement sphere, and you can open that door and go down to Blackreach. But before you do that, Let's check things out at a real slow pace. No, I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, this is getting boring real quick. So let's get on and open up this area here. And you flip this switch up here. And this is where you can stash stuff. Yep, you got a chest here. You got a strut and some other good stuff. The solid metal all this stuff you can melt down into ingots and craft dwemer bows and sell them off and raise your um smithing level up really high i'm going to take the garbage out instead and then i'm going to put in the stuff i want to store all this stuff and the charis chitin and etc yeah, and the garbage I'm going to throw away. You run up the stairs, and if you can see, there's some pipes. You walk across those pipes. You jump on them, and then you walk across. There are some boots and a helmet and some other stuff you can collect. You'll get a full set of dwarven armor, essentially. And once you walk across these pipes... There is the shield, the garbage, sword, this, this, and an ingot, which you can get from melting all the scrap metal. I'm going to drop down here, run over to this area. Nothing here. So let's go to this gate. And again, if you have an attunement sphere, you can activate this and go to black reach this is another way to get the black reach um yep let's see the attunement sphere and let's go down and take a look and see black reach again here open to black reach i'm going to do a video about black reach eventually but now you've got the missile shaft shaft and exit there's another um elevator you can ride up that will take you to the surface that is right next door but I'm not going to do that I'm going to return to Mitzelshaft and finish the mission finish this mission okay you open these doors and there will be an elevator shaft that will take you to the surface and it will be on the back end of Mitzelshaft. Now let's see. Uh, yeah, go through the load screen. At least it's not 20 minutes like it used to be. You can open this up here. And I've told you to pack rat close to the beginning or at the end here. Here is the back entrance to Mitzelshaft. This is where Mjol probably crawled out of and was found by Arn. And it's nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can mark it on the map. If not, I get a good idea of where it's located here, Mitzelshaft. I can't put a marker. So I'll just pay attention to the map, and I'm going to fast travel back and forth. You don't need to see that. I'm going to deliver the weapon to Meal. Okay, at some part, I do deliver the weapon back to Mjol. 
She is very grateful and very happy, and she offers you her services whenever you need it. You can take her on as a wife, or you can have her along on adventures to watch your back. Or you can, um, well, sacrifice her if you need to. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you like this type of video, hit the subscribe button and bell icon. I post four videos a week. I may change that at some point, but I'm still posting four videos a week, and you don't want to miss out. Thanks to all the people for watching. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for subscribing. And most of all, thanks for stopping by.